Good afternoon, all. Thank you, Madam Moderator, for giving us the floor. So, um, in this session, the first speaker talked about uh, an improved virus suppression and a reduced uh, HIV-related mortality due to new art model delivery. The second speaker just highlighted on the importance of uh, lag diagnosis program integration in health emergencies. And after this presentation, uh, you hear talk about uh, adverse birth outcomes and external birth defect among uh, women living in Malawi. And all these uh, research uh, work were done um, within the frame of uh, COVID-19 pandemics. And if you have been here since the morning with all the lectures and all the introductive uh, talks, you will realize that uh, there are several implications of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics. And um, understanding all these implications uh, of COVID-19 uh, pandemics within uh, the frame of uh, in the era of the Ritigravi transition, one may ask this, uh, itself the question, uh, what are really, what guarantee do we have in real life settings of uh, integrase inhibitors, uh, 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 long-term efficacy, as, we, can, as well, we could say. So in attempt to answer that question, we actually studied archived resistance to integrase uh, inhibitors among third-line patients under Duritegravir-based regimens in Cameroon. And uh, our presentation will uh, follow uh, this outline. Now, we all know about the uh, HIV epidemics. These are just reminders. More than three decades later, uh, HIV is still a major public health concern worldwide, and especially in sub-Saharan Africa. In Cameroon in particular, the prevalence of HIV is 2.7%, uh, with more than 37,000 new cases that were detected in uh, 2020. So from a clinical perspective, uh, CD4 depletion, which is an essential uh, uh, marker of uh, disease progression is the main clinical manifestations induced by the infection. We all know that these are just reminders. Ideally, we should observe um, a viral load decline and uh, immune recovery in a patient who is fully observant to its arts. That's the ideal situation. And the transition plan uh, uh, of the Dolitegravir transition plan launch actually uh, was um, launched actually to help achieve these objectives. And WHO actually recommends and encourages the use of Dolitegravir based regimens in uh, first line arts as well as in case of multi drug resistance. And in Cameroon, Multi-drug resistant patients are third line patients, among which we, among whom we found um, some patients that uh, who have been exposed previously to raltegravir. Doltegravir is a second generation integrase trans transfer inhibitor with a high potency and a high genetic barrier to resistance. But raltegravir on the other side is, the, is a first generation integrase inhibitor with a lower genetic barrier to resistance. So within the frame of this study, we hypothesized that previous exposure to raltegravir will actually compromise subsequent use of dolitegravir among uh, third line patients under uh, dolitegravir containing uh, therapies. So our objective was to describe the genotypic pattern of uh, resistance in third-line patients according to previous exposure to raltegravir in Cameroon. And we conducted a cross-sectional analytical and comparative study among uh, HIV patients uh, under third-line regimens in Cameroon, including consenting patients, of course, uh, of 21 years of and above with a documented exposure to integrase inhibitors 
uh, not including patients with unknown exposure to integrase inhibitors or with um, incomplete medical reports, and excluding uh, patients with unamplified samples or patients with uh, poor quality uh, sequence. And it's worth noting here that um, the Yaoundé Central Hospital and the Douala General Hospital, where we actually carried out this study, are the main treatment centers in the country with the largest HIV cohorts uh, in the country. Uh, we didn't uh, follow any probabilistic approach regarding to sampling, and we obtained ethical clearance as well as all authorized, uh, author, uh, administrative authorizations prior to the start uh, of this study. Okay, this slide here just uh, presents the pipeline of uh, integrase genotypic resistant testing carried out at the level of the laboratory, the Chantal Bia International Reference Center, the Virology Laboratory. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our results. So, out of uh, 12,093 uh, patients followed, 97 of them were actually under a third line, uh, a, an inter third line uh, art regimen in, uh, uh, in these uh, same treatment centers, and just 53 of them fully complied to our inclusion criteria, among which we counted um, eight patients exposed to raltegravir and dolitegravir now, and 45% exposed only to dolitegravir. And median age was 51 years, and 58% uh, of the participants were act came actually from uh, Yaoundé. Okay. On this slide, there's uh, two uh, major information I want us to uh, understand. Before initiation of third line regimens, viral load, the CD4 count was actually very low for uh, most of the patients, while the viral load was high. As you can testify, we had some patients with uh, more than 1,825,000 uh, copies of virus prior uh, at the initiation of third line therapies. And the overall median duration on antiretrovirals uh, for these patients was uh, 192 months. That is 16 years. But following third line regimens now, the first thing I want us to understand on this slide is that almost all of uh, third line protocols in Cameroon now are dolutegravir containing uh, uh, regimens. The most prescribed being, uh, at the moment, tenofovir, a combination of tenofovir, lamivudine, uh, dolutegravir, and boosted darunavir. And following exposure to third-line regimens, we actually uh, realized that more than three-quarters of uh, our patients were actually uh, undetectable, viremia just after um, 18 months under these third-line regimens. Because you can see on the uh, second table, on table five there, we just have had uh, three people, uh, three patients that were still uh, with varemias greater than uh, 1,000 on, on suppressed patients. And among these patients, we actually found no major uh, uh, integrase resistance mutations in plasmatic RNA. And these, but this, and this made us to think that maybe these viral loads, these high viral loads, these, that, these unsuppressed viral loads were actually, uh, may have been due to um, a virologic blip. That was our thought. And similar observation, no major of no major uh, integrase resistance were actually uh, uh, found in another study we carried out um, uh, in a cohort of uh, 918 uh, part uh, integrase naive participants. This is just to tell. Integrase uh, 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 based treatment or dolutegravir based treatment are actually very effective in our context. And on this slide, now we have the profile of archive drug resistance mutations. It's true, uh, there's so many things to say here, but I would like us to take but just two points. First of all, among all the sequences we generated, they were made, we had many polymorphisms, irrespective of the resistance profile uh, in the integrase. But secondly, just one patient with prior exposure to raltegravir was found with uh, major uh, uh, integrase resistance 
uh, and this is, but this was uh, not uh, statistically significant. There was no statistical significance with these results. Though uh, these mutations, the G140R uh, and the G163R, uh, according to the Stanford HIV database, these mutations are related to a uh, low level of resistance to dilute gravy, actually. So, um, in conclusion, almost all patients under uh, third line art in Cameroon are currently taking a dilute gravy containing therapy. About 94% of them are vir virally suppressed. That is a viral load less than 1,000 copies. It's true that the threshold is still high. And 76% are have achieved the viral control and are presently undetectable. That is just 18 months after initiation of third line antiretroviral uh, regimen. We found no intergrade resistance associated mutation in plasmatic RNA, and the genotypic profile in the proviral DNA revealed there could be archiving uh, of resistance to intergrade inhibitors after exposure to raltegravi especially in, uh, with long, when you're dealing with long-term, excuse me, especially when you're dealing with uh, long-term therapeutic uh, uh, patients. And finally, the polymorphisms uh, that we reported here are likely, uh, uh, are likely to be related with uh, genetic diversity. As way forward for this study, we plan, first of all, to extend the collection uh, uh, over a longer period because we thought that uh, the non-significance we observe with respect to integrase archived resistant mutation in the integrase may be due to the low sample size that we have uh, in that arm because uh, we had just uh, eight patients compared that we compared to 45. That it's one of the uh, uh, limitation we had in our context. Secondly, we are planning for this patient with prior exposure to raltegravir, we are planning in-depth analysis, maybe with the agency of uh, uh, next generation sequencing, we are planning in-depth analysis of drug resistant mutation in minority variants. And thirdly, we also are planning to conduct a prospective cohort study in order to better appreciate uh, over time the impact of the use of raltegravi on dolutegravi uh, in our context. And I will not uh, hand over the floor without saying a big thank you, first of all, to all our participants, secondly, to the health facilities, the Yaoundé Central Hospital and the Douala General Hospital, and also to our entire research team in Cameroon, first of all, and abroad also in Italy. Specifically, I would like to acknowledge here uh, our head of lab, Dr. Joseph Fokam, and especially two master students which, uh, who accompanied uh, me to the field to make sure these data are uh, being taken correctly, and these are the results we presented. Thank you for your attention.